Welcome viewers. Now we're going straight to anal analyzing on the stories that we read out to you earlier. We have our guest this morning. He is Dr. Yahuza Getsu. He is a security expert. We'll be talking about, we'll be analyzing the stories that we read out to you earlier. It's good to have you on the show today, sir. Good morning, Annabelle. Thank Good you, morning viewers. You. Thank you for having me. Great. All right, viewers, our phone lines are open. You can call in to make your contributions or ask your questions. Now, let's talk about most of the things that you find in almost all the headlines this morning. We'll start with um, Daily Sun. Says, INEC makes U-turn on election shift. Says, Nigerians will vote as scheduled and then confirms 93.469 million eligible voters to vote. And then he says, um, Lagos, Kano, Kaduna with highest voters. And then when you move to other, story, other um, headlines, still on the same story, the Vanguard newspaper says, polls, 93.47 million voters to participate. That is coming from INEC. Vows to go ahead with election. Present voters registered to parties. North gets 50.162 million voters, while South gets 43 million, for 3.305 million voters. So... Now, my question is, um, two questions, and I'd like you to unbundle them in one breath. The first one is, a few days ago, you recall that uh, you have um, stories flying around saying that um, the election might not hold with regards to insecurity, or it might be postponed or cancelled completely. But then, later on, they came out to debunk the story, and then INEC is saying that regardless, that the, there will be no postponement of the election, the election will definitely hold. Now, what are your thoughts on that um, because that actually threw a lot of Nigerians in disarray. And then you have that um, still on the front burner. Now, that's one on the side. And then secondly, 93.47 million voters. You have men um, topping the chart. You have women almost um, at, uh, like at par with men. Okay, I think, let me, let me check it from Daily Sun. It says, um, okay, I think I saw, okay, yes, that's Nigerian Tribune. Actually says, uh, male, 49 million um, voters female 44 million over 44 million voters then youth 18 to 34 over 37 million voters so with all these people making like the social media files that you get everybody we're all jared up about the elections and then those going into um the have organizing the one million man match and all of that but yet you still have north top in the chart and then south they are the list what are your thoughts on all of this well, uh, uh, first of all, uh, it was regard to the issue of um, uh, election or no election. Nigerians should know that there will be no election if there is no election. What does that even mean? Uh, so, the 29th May, the new president must be sworn in. Mm. So, it is the responsibility of every Nigerian to know that INEC have no any reason even those days in the 2015 when you used to have the cases of detonation of bombs mm. and more fun and more direct challenging security uh, issues the elections took place and then of course it is very clear that the total number of the security agencies uh, personnel that we have put together uh, in the 27 security agencies that we have an, a, available in Nigeria, we don't have adequate personnel to manage, to man the election, uh, uh, polling units, political wards, states, local governments, and senatorial zone, as well as the uh, uh, gubernatorial zones. But it may be a slip of tongue. I'm not depending on INEC. But it will be really a big slap and a big shame. At this point in time, when Nigerians show their commitment, mm. and if you look at the, uh, uh, I have visited some of the uh, PBC collection centers. Nigerians are really willing. Nigerians are really determined. Nigerians are, have really have passion. And Nigerians have really put their trust and confidence on INEC in respect to receiving the pvc because that is the only thing you will use to 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 vote for your candidate mm. so for this it is not at the time when there is mass turnout that INEC should make that statement and we need to go to into the root cause 
what really made media to have send this message around was it the media that sent it but it, it means well, that it was said well I, I, it was said they said uh, it was mentioned by professor zuru mm. i i didn't hide it myself but i'm sure media must have an evidence because me, media have been doing a very good job we must to commend the media because you have been doing very well in terms of educating Nigerians, sensitizing Nigerians, mobilizing Nigerians, building the confidence and trust of Nigerians in respect to state of preparedness, in respect to the 2023 election. So if media have been doing very well, and if Nigerians have been doing very well by coming out, looking at the turnover, as mentioned by the uh, uh, INEC chairman, the outlined figure of the male female students uh, and the by regions have that confidence and courage to have that pvc's collected why should that statement come out from where is the statement coming out from i think there is a missing link information management within the INEC need to be kind of re-coordinated there is a poor coordination mechanism if at all Someone will make mention something and someone will debounce it. Uh, and there should be close alliance, close collaboration, partnership, and consultation in terms of how to manage information. Even though the Buhara administration have made Nigerians to have lost confidence because of different information that issue issues around information management. But just to be on the subject, uh, I, I, I really wonder because all the newspapers. And all the uh, media houses have carried out this information that the election was not going to hold, may be postponed. So what were the reasons? Some of the reasons as mentioned is the security challenges. Yes, of course, we know the government of Buhari administration have failed Nigerians in terms of providing adequate security to the extent that Nigerians have lost confidence. Now, but I want to tell Nigerians that Nigeria is our country. Nigeria does not belong to President Muhammad Buhari. He is already 80. It belongs to all of us. So whether Muhammad Buhari or without Muhammad Buhari, Nigeria will remain. So we need to defend our integrity. We need to defend our territory, territory and we need to defend our, our votes. And we need to make sure that we cast it our vote and follow up to ensure that our vote is, count, is counted and we elect the right person that will come and do the right job. There is no iota of excuses for anybody. So for this, I'm making a clarion call that the civil society organizations, the philanthropists, and other community structured structures need to work closely with the available, the minimum, the minute number of security personnel we have to ensure that we supported in providing. We have a, 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 a forest marshal. We have hunters. We have other traditional uh, security uh, uh, surveillance. We have other, security, uh, other traditional policing uh, system in all parts of the country. So we should work hand in hand with available security personnel that we have to ensure that uh, election materials are delivered to polling units and also election is casted, counted, and escorted to ensure that we will follow the due process to ensure that uh, everything is done according to the procedure and according to the schedule so that we prevent it and we also contribute our own civic rights and also citizen All right. mandate. All right, before you continue, I would like you to touch on that uh, last uh, statement I made. You have um, the male topping the chart, female. Now it, looks, it, uh, it actually shows that more women are concerned about 2023 elections. So do you actually think that it's going to be business as usual where you have... Um, uh, politicians uh, giving them rappers, Maggi, Souls, and all of that, or this time they will tell them right to their faces, I'm not selling my rights or my votes for a meal of porridge. Well, I, I want to uh, tell you that some Nigerians, uh, many of the uh, uh, contenders have already started doing that. Most definitely. It's already a business of the day. During the campaign days, we have seen them distributing soap, distributing money, distributing raffles, distributing rice, distributing salt, maggi, and others. I encourage Nigerians, whatever they give you, collect it. But make your own decision. Let's not allow your decision to be influenced by a tin, three or five tins of maggi cube, three cube of soap, 
Omo, or a modu, a one size Nigerians to collect what they are giving out. Of course. But you know that these days, whatever you are want to collect your PVC, in fact, they are looking at you and they they have a way of like. I want to make, ensure that you are doing what I ask you to do. Well, I want to tell you that with the machine that is available as provided by ANIC, if at all they are sincere, honest, and there is uh, 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 sincerity in the purpose. You mean the beavers? Yes, of course. So nobody will do that because you have to be with your PBC. So if somebody give you Magic Cube and collected your PBC, nobody can use it. It is only you. So why are they buying the PVCs? We saw reports saying that uh, politicians well, are buying people's PVCs. There are three reasons. Those politicians who lost confidence, who believe that they have underserved their communities, they don't have courage, they are not sincere, they are not honest, they don't have the capability, they lack qualities. So they want to ensure that they buy PVCs in order to cripple and to ensure that some of the good candidates have not been uh, kind of uh, succeeding in getting more votes. That is just the reason. And I think the, the security agencies and the intelligence should work hard to ensure that they tackle those, uh, they fish out those who are doing so and punish them accordingly so that it serves as a deterrence. It happens mostly because of the level of uh, a poverty poverty that we have. Mm. Because it happens in most of the security front states and LGS where people are begging for what to eat, mm. where people are lobbying for what to eat, and their alt part of their alternative is if they sell the PBC, they will be able to get the food to eat. So, do you think, see, are so, that ever stopping? So, uh, well, uh, government, if the security agencies, if, if our intelligence are serious. They can be able to stop some of those things. How do you want to stop it when um, um, politicians have decided to weaponize poverty and cash out on it? Well, uh, Nigerians are being sensitized by the media every now and then. And also some of the philanthropists and um, other Nigerians, well-meaning Nigerians, are making a clarion cause. So I call on all the clerics. Islamic and uh, Christian clerics mm. and other philanthropists, even the traditional leaders, and the traditional leaders, even though most of the some of the traditional leaders, as we observe, have been bought by the politicians. Mm. Because I have gone around some of the states and I have seen traditional leaders in the banner, in the posters, being captioned in the posters, in the same post, uh, posters with uh, gubernatorial con uh, contenders. And I want to tell you. Even in one of the constituencies, all the traditional leaders, right from the white head, the village heads, and all the imams were invited by one of the emirs when one of the contenders of one of the political parties visited. We don't know what really transpired because they were, they were mobilized at night. I realized that many of them around 11, 11.30 p.m., midnight, they were struggling to get a vehicle. At a time when that vice presidential contender and gubernatorial contender was passing from the seat of the Emirates, going back to the state capital, at that hour, there was history, wait, 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 wait. while many of the imams and other traditional leaders were waiting for a, a thinking and left stranded on how to get the vehicles. So I want to warn, I'm sending a warning message to the traditional leaders who are participating in the political activities. One, you are losing credibility. Two, you are compromising your reputation. Three, you are compromising your seat. Because if the, other, the government of the, uh, the other party won the election, definitely it is going to be uh, another business, not uh, uh, you to be the same traditional leader. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's what will happen. But that is the message. Mm -hmm. Why should a traditional leader or religious leader be asked to participate and in one of the, uh, uh, even uh, uh, mosque, I had one of the uh, uh, religious leaders. I had it by myself. He made a pronouncement asking the, the, the participant at the mosque to vote after one senator. Oh, no. And also uh, he mentioned the senator. And he said that the traditional leader instructed him to make that statement. Oh, no. This is condemnable. Mm. This cannot be acceptable. And this is very wrong. So traditional leaders should respect themselves and stop compromising. Mm. We know many of them have already compromised 
because they don't have a constitutional base. That is one of the reasons why we are asking the next legislative arm of government to provide a constitutional base for traditional authorities and for them to have a responsibility in the discharge of, in, in, in delivering the citizen right so that they cannot be bought and be played as like a child uh, by the politicians. That All is right. very, very wrong and absolutely wrong. All right, let's move to other stories. And um, because you um, talked about President Muhammad Buhari, you said, made a, a statement, and I will quote you. You mm. said, President Muhammad Buhari has failed Nigerians yeah. with regards to security. That's what you said. Yeah. Now, a um, few days ago, I, we read... I a stand my word. Okay, now, so a few days ago, we read a particular report saying that President Muhammad Buhari says that he has mm. actually delivered on his promises, that he didn't rescind on his promises to with regards to fighting Boko Haram, even though we had... Um, we had a okay that was even yesterday mm -hmm. and even though we had a, a, an analyst who said that he has fought boko haram he f promised to fight boko haram so he has fought boko haram but then you still have other festering um, criminal uh, cases and then daily sun this morning says boko haram ploy to destroy nigeria mm -hmm. and that's coming from buhari he pledges to pay more attention to economy now on one side president mohammed mm -hmm. buhari gives himself a, a thumbs up and then Max all ticks all the right boxes says he has fought boko haram but here you are security consultant mm. telling nigerians that he has failed what what exactly made you make that statement? well uh, i i am repeating myself i have said it i will say it and that's my stand that president muhammad buhari has failed nigerians as far as security is concerned we cannot say that there is no iota of progress made because we knew sometimes back there used to be a lot of detonation of bombs mm. at the uh, public, places, public places market mocks churches and other social gatherings when you see someone drop a nylon bag yeah uh, people start running mm. um we must commend the efforts made by the muhammad Buhari administration to some extent but if i want to assess him i will say that he performed 30 percent okay 25 30%. to 30 percent let's leave it at 30 percent let's quickly take this call we'll continue hello good morning good morning good morning sir tell us your name where you're calling us from hello go ahead please right me from abuja oh, okay go ahead please you have 30 seconds okay uh you want to thank you annabelle this morning for the guest you bring in and uh, I want to really congratulate him because I know that history will have him for staying with the truth this morning. In the security aspect, he has hit the nail on the head. And I pray for courage for him to insist on the right thing and the truth at all times, whether to the authority or to the followers. Let us insist on the right thing. Whether they hear or not, we know that one day things will change for better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raimi, from Abuja for that contribution. Go ahead. You stopped at 30. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, for Buhari to make that statement is an is a capital deceit. It's an absolute deceit. Who is deceiving who? Na Buhari is deceiving Nigerians and deceiving himself. You are talking about the president, of course, the commander in chief of the armed forces. Of course, of course. Telling the Buhari Buhari the truth is what matters, because he may not understand now he, as he is on the seat of power. But it is better for us, for me to speak on behalf of the voiceless, for me to be bold enough to speak the truth, than to hide the truth until when he left the, the villa, then he understood that there was a mistake somewhere. I can't press him for not performing. What happens in Maiha? Can you tell me that Maiha, Madagali, Michika, Goza, Askira, Oba, Chibok, Dembua, Goza, Yusfari, Birmari, Gaidam, Bunia, Di Bunigari, Biu, Howell, Shafa, Yimishkira, and other places in the northeastern part of the country, especially those I mentioned are part of Adama and part of Borno, where Gondi, Mubi, uh, 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 and, and all alike uh, 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 that have been uh, 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 persuaded by the Boko Haram. How can you tell me that you have succeeded in, in, in dealing with Boko Haram? Of course, you have moved an inch. But you have not done something that deserves commendation. So it's better for Buhari to stop deceiving Nigerians. And of course, we have to commend some of the agiles, even though we have three categories of the security personnel. We have those who resign from the service, 
But they have the feeling and they have the readiness. And they have been advising the government, but the government have not been listening. We have unscrupulous element, a lot of them in the service, in all the service security agencies. And we also have those agile, committed, who have passion in true chastism, dedicated and absolute patriotism for discharging their responsibility. So as far as we are concerned, Muhammad Wari have not provided an enabling environment for the security services to have operated and delivered their mandate. Oh, so he yes. failed woefully as far as fighting Boko Haram is concerned yes. because that's what promoted even the issue of an emergence of issue of Let's and the domination. Call. Hello, good morning, Chief Ayo from Kaduna. Good morning. Good to hear from you. It has been a while. Most definitely, it's been a while. Mm. Happy New Year to you, sir. God bless you. God bless you too. Uh, uh, good morning to your station. I want to really appreciate your 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 analysis. You have said it all. There is nothing left behind. You see, it is better it is better for us not to deceive ourselves. Uh, let me pardon me to use this word, sycophant. There are some sycophants surrounding Gwari. We are not telling Gwari the truth. Today, Gwari is telling the Catholic Bishop Conference that he has performed well, that in terms of security. Today, we are saying that in his own case, do the man, give him a photo, and others, they cannot win. And worry is not taking that into account. Is worry deceiving himself or not? You see, the problem with worry is that when worry comes down, he will know that definitely there are a lot of people deceiving him. Now they are pressing him now. They are pressing him. You see, in my own view, Buhari is a general. Jonathan is a civilian. Jonathan has performed one million times more than Buhari when it comes to security. Buhari, we thought that Buhari was going to solve the problem of Nigeria. That is why Nigeria voted Buhari into power. Mm. But today, what are we seeing today? Buhari has failed. Even the thirty percent your analysts have given to him, I give him zero percent. Oh, no. I, I give him zero percent because he's a general and he's and and he's a warlord. And right. today, look at what is happening in Nigeria. Is it the economy you will talk of? Is it the security you will talk of? Is it what you will talk of? Where he has got zero. It is hard right. that we vote him out so that we bring somebody that can move this country forward. God bless your station. God bless Nigeria. God bless you too, Chief Ayo, calling us from Kaduna State. Okay. Well, uh, oh no, zero no. percent. Mm. Uh, well, I'm actually, not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure uh, if it is zero percent. Myself and the chief are who wouldn't have been able to come out of our houses mm. to come to the media station and wouldn't have had an enabling environment to make a phone call. So we have to be fair to some of our dedicated, uh, patriotic, enthusiastic uh, uh, security personnel. Mm. Of course, we know we have many unscrupulous elements, but the effort, we cannot say that all the investment that have been made it was made they support the uh, jets uh, and all yeah, of that yeah yeah mm. uh, so uh, even for the purchase of those uh, machines Depends. even though they have not been used adequately or as expected and then i want to refer president Muhammad buhari back to 20 2007 uh, 2011 and 2013-14 where he had an airtel line and that airtel was accessible by almost everybody in all the 774 local governments then even now that we have 773 local governments let muhammad Buhari open that line for eight days and make a pronouncement that he needs input realistic input input with evidence from the local front state uh, local government and states through that airlines i know uh, that airtel i know that airtel almost every in each and every local government and at least in every three political world in nigeria nigerians have that number and when he was campaigning when he was shedding tears when he was making promises empty promises when he was making assertions when he was criticizing eradua obasanjo and uh, uh, good luck jonathan when he was saying that pdp has felt when he was taking oath of those promises when he made a statement that i belong to everybody and i belong to nobody buhari have forgotten 
that Nigerians are keeping documentation. So those local governments I mentioned, can Buhari tell me that why didn't he use why did he use helicopter in flying between Borno and uh, Yobi? But then he has already, why did he use he why did he send, That's fly? why we have service chiefs. He has already sent out uh, made the the order. You've heard that. What difference have they made? You've heard of so many shooter fights. Let, let me let life. me tell you one thing. I want to commend the the commissioner of police of the FCT and the AIG of uh, Katsana Zone and the CP Katsana. The three outgoing CPs and the serving CP in Katsana have been testified and telling the public the truth. And even the AIG Katsana. They made mention very clear that we are handcuffed as far as manpower is concerned. So how can you, when you need a hundred personnel to fight an enemy, you have only three personnel, how do you chase the enemy? How can you chase the enemy when the enemy have a better reform than what your personnel have? How can you chase enemy when there are allegations and assertions against the personnel on corrupt practices and you were unable to check it? How can you have a change in the system when you have the same service chiefs that are still serving? Those that are out of service, they are still the service chiefs. Mm, All the security heads in Nigeria, they knew let's that I have call. interfaced with them and I have told them the truth let's, of what's supposed to be done, which they refuse to do. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Tell us your name or where you're calling us from. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Tell us your name or where you're calling us from. <laughs> You go and then please call us back if you can. Good morning. Hello. Good morning to you. All right. This um, let's take other uh, other one. Still on insecurity. Mm -hmm. The Guardian newspaper says um, bandits kill two, abduct four women in Kaduna State. And on the flip side, you have um, on insecurity, um, police direct. Okay, now they are going to, I'm going to um, um, uh, box in two questions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the same part. Now, on the Edo train attack, you have 20 kidnapped, not 32. That is coming from the commissioner mm -hmm. because he came out to say that um, it is 20 and not 32. Mm -hmm. And then I'm wondering, one or two, what is the difference? Tomato, tomato. And it's well, same difference. And you know, when you have a stew, an okra stew, and that of a uh, uh, goosey stew, you have, it's still called stew. So, whichever way, is it not a shame on the face of the police to look at the public to say that people were abducted at the train station, not outside, wherever it is, it happens. Mm. Nigeria's security operatives are supposed to have taken lessons from what happened. And every responsible person, any responsible government, any serious government, any serious group, any serious iota of coordinated system is supposed to have learned out of the lessons that happened. In what happened between Kaduna and Abuja could have saved Nigerians from being attacked in Edo. Uh, it's the same Nigerians. Let's quickly take this call. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. I'm calling from directly from Zenith from a uh, type two of, of the local government of Zenith. Uh, All right, please turn, the, turn down the volume of your TV set so we can hear you. Are you hearing me now? It. Hello. Go ahead. So this problem, hello? Go ahead. I, okay, what I'm trying to say is that the world is starting in this stage. When police can come and say that not starting is, is 20 people as a class. It is, it, it is unfair. It is not fear that they can get to offer common matters. If this is what is not so, that is told. It is not a human being. If it's not happen to them, can it be, can it be to be like, so what government is doing, this is going to be totally failing everything. Failing totally all the security and economically. What a lot of catastrophe has happened in this regime and they don't want to take the correction of it. If you give them a guide, they will be at one of the fast food. Mm. When something is going on, when something is going on, this is not, it's not good in the country. I'm supposed to take to the correction. The agency you can never take to this again. Thank you for having me this morning. From the Thank state. you so much for calling us this morning. I think we have another caller. Hello, good morning. All right, so, 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 now, so as, as, as far as I'm concerned, so as far as you're concerned, it is um, six and a half a dozen. Same of course, difference. It's, it's the same difference. They are all human beings, mm. they are all Nigerians, mm. <coughs> and it means that sorry, it means that 
uh, Nigeria Railway Corporation, Nigerian police, uh, police force, and all other intelligence have not learned lessons from what happens with, with the train from Kaduna to Abuja, Abuja to Kaduna, sometimes 28 March last year. Mm. And that but is an took a long time before we got the, yes. those victims And we lose a lot of resources. And these criminals are traceable. So it's only that because we don't have a serious government, we don't have a government that believes that the, the, the human, uh, the life of people and their property have a value. But if you say we don't have a serious government, they have police right there, they had vigilantes, they had hunters. So if they have, why do, did it take them how many months were they able to bring out the people from uh, captivity i'm not and remember, about let, me, let me tell you let me for uh, Edo state is, is recent the girls have been in the in the in the in the hostage under the custody of the criminals of uh, federal government Benin Yawri, and many others and i want to tell you that many other part of the country is not motorable even in the fct even day before yesterday, yesterday I was on the hospital on admission, but day before yesterday, I moved around between 11 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. Here in Abuja, in the capital city of Abuja, between Guarumfa to Live Camp to uh, Day Day to uh, down to, uh, to Metama to Uye to Games Village, round to the areas of uh, Seda Crest, to Mitama, a fair resettlement, a Sokoro, and a uh, 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 part of Wuse, and the central business district. I have not seen an ordinary human person, even the dog, in the name of security, stopping me to ask me, what are you doing, why are you moving around? All right, all right, hold on, hold so on. So even on in the FCT, we have issue. Hold on, on that thought. And the Guardian commissioner have started doing well, Dr. but there is need to improve. Dr. Getsu, hold on on that thought. On the Guardian newspaper, maybe I should, I need to... Um, Correct that impression. The Guardian newspaper says on insecurity, police direct operative to intensify stop search operations in the FCT. Well, how come you didn't meet anyone? Well, uh, I, I, I commend the outgoing CP and the incoming CP for the collaboration, the synergy, improvement, level of improvement. There is some level of improvement, but they are still not doing well. They still need to do more. I appreciate. The two of them, the outgoing and the incoming, the new commissioner. Because he is mobilizing and uh, intensifying and improving the relationship with community-driven strategy to ensure that something is done well. But I want to tell him, and I am telling the authority in the FCT, and I am telling the management of the FCT administration, the minister himself, I passed around his house around 2 a.m., and nobody stopped me. And I want to tell the president that I pass around part of the presidential villa between 3 a.m. and 3.45. Nobody asked me to stop and sa for such. I was in Asokoro between quarter to four to almost 4.30 before I proceed down to the express and there was nobody. I'm not saying that there is no improvement. I'm not saying that they are not doing anything. But I want to tell them that the criminals always take advantage of those late hours when the security personnel are going back to their sleeping beds. And that is the time they are taking advantage. I am moving around simply because I am a Nigerian and an, an expert on investigation, intelligence and security in order to harness, to mobilize, to generate intelligence and information to see what is happening. There are issues that I have seen in the days between the 25th of December, 23rd of December, today before yesterday, I have been taking every other day to move around alone with my car, just to move around the FCT, and it's even outskirts, because some days even I visited Oto Karshi, and there was nobody stopping to search for me, and there was a day I also passed through Babalada and Abaji, I didn't see a human being. So there was a day, let me tell you, don't quote me, there was a day I left through Duse, uh, Buari, up to Jere, and from Jere I come back through Katari, uh, through Tapa, and come back through Zuba. I didn't see any stop and such. And all this I'm doing, I normally move between 12 midnight, 
to 4.30 to 5 a.m. So if at all, I have this and I have my evidence and there are certain things which I have seen, I will try as much as possible to uh, kind of uh, uh, meet one in one with the security uh, uh, chiefs in, in FCT in order to pass some informations. There are certain things I cannot share on public because I'm doing it to help them. I'm doing it to, as, to deliver my civic right and as a responsibility All as right. a Nigerian citizen who has the intelligence, quality and the capacity. All right, Doctor, Courage and confidence. We, we need to manage our time. Yeah. Now, you are talking about um, seeing, not seeing, stop and search. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like you're one of one part of the Nigerians who actually is expecting to see stop and search. Mm -hmm. But you know that there are some Nigerians that they are not expecting to see stop and search. At some point when they said that they dislodged all the stop and search, a lot of people were happy about it. Well, because I, of their exploitations. Well, uh, uh, of course, the exploitation is not good. But the stop and search, no matter how, Nigerians should be responsible enough. Many of us, the public, are not responsible. That is why we are having a session why the stop and search. Who asked you to give them the money? They are not col uh, collecting under duress. But are they, are they, are they searching? Even if they ask. Doctor Getsu, are they searching? Even if they are not Sometimes searching. Sometimes they just ask. Let me tell question. you, even if they are not searching, their presence matters a lot. Even if I, as a security expert, I'm speaking it in confidence. Even if they are not searching, even if they are stopping to ask you to own your light in the car, they are not searching your boots. We can call them, we can make a clarion call for them to improve in what they have been doing. But for them to stop, to, to, to be aware of the road, or to go to the sleeping bed, after that the commissioner of police and the police of the security authority have instructed them to do so, and I am boldly saying it, I am speaking on behalf of the voiceless, that they are not available in the midnight, they are going back to their sleeping bed. And those are the opportunities the criminals will take advantage and bubble how people houses and also make attacks and take advantage and do whatever they can. So their, their presence, those who are saying that stop and search is not important, they don't know what security is, is mean. And it is very, very important, especially in the seat of government. I am re-encouraging the government and the police authority to please allow that to continue. But to have a monitoring and tracking system by which those on school floors who are begging, who are lobbying, who are asking for money, who are asking under duress, who are forcing people to give them, because we have all this evidence. We have those who are begging, because they are not probably being paid their allowances and salary or they don't have adequate. We have those who are asking politely, give us money for water. Help us or feel or, or feel or, or we have or, or feel we have some of them who are on scrofless, they are using the opportunity, especially at the late hours, to 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 uh, uh, collect money from uh, especially some of the criminals, and uh, some of them are also being intimidated by people with big cars, SUVs, and others. So, the, uh, the police authority and all other uh, um, stakeholders that is the security agencies, should make sure that they rebuild their capacity, the capacity and also the intelligence all right. who are moving around to check net, to double check, to cross check, to monitor. There should be a monitoring system. Mm. There is no monitoring and evaluation. That is what I'm blaming the Nigerian police, especially the FCT command. You don't have monitoring system. That is why I, the Tehuza Jets, or move around all these areas. I entered Kaduna State, I entered Nasarawa State, I entered Kogi State, I check around all the outskirts of the FCT, all part of the area council between the 23 and day before yesterday. Yesterday I was on admission, that's why I didn't go out. Even today I will still go out. And I want to tell you that you don't have a monitoring system. That is why your personnel are going back to their sleeping bed anytime after 12 midnight. From 12 a.m. I move around. From 2 a.m., I move around. 3 a.m., I move around. I didn't see them in the central area. So I didn't see them in the Wuse. I didn't see them in Uwe. So I didn't see anybody in Asokoro. I didn't see anybody along the express, uh, Kubua, uh, 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 express. I didn't see anybody around Gogolera. I, I move around. I didn't see anybody in Abaji. I told you I've gone there. I took even the risk. To move into Kaduna State, part of the Kaduna State, because I moved to uh, through Buari, uh, uh, down to Jere. From Jere, I come back through Tapa 
to Rizuba. Nobody stopped me. All right. And I have my evidences. I do it because I want to generate information to pro to support the oh. intelligence in their operatives uh, as, as, they, as, they, as they move. And uh, definitely, uh, that's what I have been doing and I will continue to do it. Oh. It's part of my civic responsibility and as an expert, I need to have evidence before I come out to speak on behalf of the voiceless. All right. Uh, um, we actually passed through um, airports road and then I saw some um, checkpoints there. So now... At what hour? Uh, that was I'm not arguing around 10 o'clock. I when I say midnight, okay, you mean from, twelve. I say also oh, from after yes. ten they go back to sleep. Is that I, what you're I, saying? I, so after ten, most especially from around twelve they start dis disengaging. And that's the you time usually, when you yes, of course. You usually find them available doing the job, whether right or wrong. Their presence matters a lot, and it's really helpful for security. And so it's if really they should be the criminals. If they should, so they between should stop and search. anything between six. To uh, uh, 11 30, 11 45 p.m., you see them available on That's the okay, so, so, if there should be stop and search, then it means that there should be stop and search through all the boots. Yes, of course. You should open the boots or something. They know professional, you know, it's not something we would explain at the media, but they know the language. Usually, each and every divisional police officer, each and every CRO, before they, they discharge their team, they normally have morning lecture afternoon lecture and evening lecture and every time the radio if you meet any of the police team you realize that they have a radio a walkie talkie that they are using the cp and the criminal from the first headquarters hello good morning sir you need to turn down the volume of your tv set so we can hear you All right, go ahead. Good morning, I'm Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say Bless you to Elder Zion calling us from Jaws. Our time is fast spent, but I'd like us to touch on this um, particular headline. Mm -hmm. If you can help me in just one minute, don't forget to one minute. Mm -hmm. Presidency, Tinubu article trade words over. That's coming from Ga Vanguard newspaper. Says um, Tinubu article trade words over health and credibility um, status. And the writers to that story there on the Vanguard says worry about ex VP's health and credibility, not me. Tinubu tells Nigerians. Then the other person says, "You are, you are, you are not fit." 
to hold office as president atiku okowa mocks apc you keep hearing this kind of jabs coming forth and then yet these same people sign the peace accord but then you know that all of these jabs will definitely mm -hmm. hit the polity mm -hmm. in one word what are your thoughts on this well i i condemn the strategy apc is using and uh, that of a uh, team of atiku if at all these are the words they are using uh, because what they're supposed to do you're supposed to campaign on issues mm. not on personality dwell more on issues that matters to nigerians how to solve the security how to address the economic challenges the harsh situation of what nigerian masses are after we we are not after your personal challenges what we are after and what matters to us and what matters to nigerians is tell us convince us what are you going to do different even though we had some of them like tinubu as mentioned sometimes that he is, was going to build where buhari stuff we are not happy if you are going to build where buhari stuff because where buhari stuff is from good to bad he started from good to bad he came with good intention i belongs to nobody i belongs to ever uh, to, to everybody but we have not seen that in practice promise to provide better economy a better social amenities better infrastructures better security but rather than getting scared we are getting unscared by day so these are the key issues all right we are i challenge all of them and i condemn them in totality bold and italic mm -hmm. that is it is very wrong for you to be personality uh, chasers doing your campaign on issues all right talk to nigerians on issues not on personality a reputational perspective and so on and so forth thank you so we don't much. want to hear that that is that is rubbish in us thank you so much dr yahuza gets the security consultant it's always a pleasure having this talk with you uh, thank you for having me thank you viewers and listeners for giving us the chance great awesome all right viewers that's where we end this segment of the show we have been chatting with dr yahuza gets so he is a security consultant and thank you so much for, to all those who called in